Father, we bless your name this hour. This is the Oracle Television Network Inspiration Hour. This is a moment where we come to you wherever you are and just inform you, inspire you, and impart you with what you require to complete your destiny well, to walk in this life with wisdom, because that is some, uh, one of the secrets of a colorful future and destiny. I call it the secret of wisdom. There is a place you will never step your feet if you don't have the secret of wisdom. If you are not a wise man, there is a place you will never step. There are doors that will never open for you. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Thank you so much for getting uh, to be part of Inspiration Hour through the Oracle Television Network. I want to pick up from there concerning the secrets of destiny. Uh, this is a moment where we equip you, we equip our destiny, we equip our lives so that eventually you are able to reach where God wants you to be. Because as per now, you are not where even you yourself you need to be. I am not where I need to be. I am not where God wants me to be. That is why I must get every secret that will be able to make me successful in life and in destiny. Vision is one of them. Being a man of vision, being able to see where you are going before you arrive there. You are able to see the future. That is why God spoke to Abraham and he told him as far as your eyes can see. If you are going to study the book of Genesis chapter 13, you are able to see the journey of Abraham. And God spoke to him and he told him after Lot had separated, Lot was a nephew. That is, Abraham was Lot's nephew. And eventually, there was a quarrel between the herdsmen of Lot and the herdsmen of Abraham. Abraham came up with a solution and he said, we don't have to quarrel, you are my nephew. You choose where you want to go. You will be surprised at the moment they separated. God spoke to Abraham. And he told Abraham, now lift your eyes eastward, westward, northward, and southward. As far as your eyes can see, I have given you. That is one of the secrets. You cannot arrive at a future you have not seen. You can't be a manager if you have not seen yourself being a manager. You can't be promoted to any level if you don't see yourself in that level. That is the secret of destiny we call vision. Wisdom means the ability uh, to apply the knowledge you know, the ability to be able to navigate relationships. That is wisdom. It's one of the secrets of destiny. Character is one of them. Good character for that matter. Not every character, but good character. There are people who have very bad character. No wonder they will remain in one level for long. Not because God does not want them to go to the next level, but simply because they are not rising up to their occasion. They are not reaching a point in their lives where they are able to say, Lord, I need to have a good character. That is why one of the things that God gave Abraham, whom we call a friend of God, one of the things he gave is what I call uh, the ability to protect his name. He told him, I will give you a name. I will exalt your name. I will make your name great. So a good name comes because of a good character. And in a previous episode, we were able also to establish the secret of developing yourself. The secret of developing yourself. We want to do a recap and then we pick up from there so that you get maximum benefits in this inspiration hour. You are able to grow. You are able to reach where God wants you to reach on time so that you break the power of delay. Because many people have delayed in life and destiny. Where they were supposed to be five years ago, they are here in 2020. It is the will of God that you rise up and be in what I call the Kairos moment of God. Kairos moment, the divine moment of God, operating on the divine calendar, being where you are when God is supposed to say you are there also. Uh, so far, the Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 18, 19, and then we go to verse 23. It's explaining, there was an incident in the life of King Saul when he was so much disturbed. And people saw, what can we do with the king? They said, we need a musician. They found out that they needed a man who could be able to play the guitar well. A man who was able to bring a godly entertainment, an environment with praise. And they chose David. And they said, we know David, son of Jesse, 
He's a man who is prudent in matters. He's not a simple man, but he's a man who has developed himself while he was taking care of his father's sheep in the wilderness, in the place of grazing. He was able to develop himself. He was not idle. A lot of people in our generation are very idle. You find somebody can watch football the whole day, the whole week. They cannot rise up to the occasion and develop yourself. Do things that will develop you to the next level, like David in the scripture. And although David was lost in the wilderness, although he appeared to have been forgotten in the wilderness, it's like he had been lost in obscurity. Nobody again remembered him. People continued with their work in this family of Jesse. What David knew brought him out. So David would have still been in the wilderness tending his father's sheep if he never knew anything, if he had never developed himself. But what he knew brought him out. So it does not matter where you are located. This is what I want to speak to somebody. It does not matter where you are located. If you can just know something, if you can just develop yourself where you are, it will bring you out and people will know you. So don't worry about location. Just keep on developing yourself. If you can only know what you know will bring you out of obscurity. Seek not to be known. Don't even fight to be known. What you can only fight for is fight to know better and determine to know instead. And what you know will make you known. Determine in yourself to know something. And what you know will make you known. I've seen people who have been brought by their talents. I've seen people who have just been brought from nowhere and within an instant their name was an household name all over the world. Why? They knew something that brought them out and made them to be known. Don't struggle to be known. Just struggle to know much. Struggle to know more and more. Fight for you to know more. And you should determine to know relevant things. I want to give to you three things that you should know as far as developing yourself is concerned. The knowledge of God is number one. The knowledge of your maker. Because God is our maker. We are where we are. We are able to enjoy the sunlight, the serene environment you are able to see behind me. Why? There is a God who has put these ideas in men. For men in this hotel I call Buraz Zenoni, if you look at the parking lot, it is appealing. You desire to just come here and enjoy the breeze of the morning. They would have chosen, if you can see in my background, they would have chosen uh, to also put another hotel here. But wisdom demanded that you have to accommodate the people you want to come to the hotel. So meaning, they went an extra mile, they left a big chunk of land, specifically for parking and for flowers, live flowers. And that is why it is very exciting. So, because God is a master builder. God is a God who gives men ideas. If men can implement the ideas God gives them, you can see something like what you are seeing around my environment. So developing yourself, developing your career, develop where God has positioned you, it will always bring you out and you will not struggle. If it is a business for customers, develop yourself in the knowledge of God, develop yourself in the knowledge of your career. Knowledge of your career. Many people, they don't remember a thing they studied in Form 4. Because the day they concluded Form 4 certificate, whether it was in November in our days, they left it at that. They never went back again in to remind things themselves. So they are now irrelevant. Even people who are in Standard 8 now, they know more than people who went to Form 4 and they refused to, to develop themselves. So you must have the knowledge of career. Have no better be overqualified in your career. Study, that is what the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show yourself approved in your career, in your giftings. Study to show yourself approved. Knowledge also of your destiny is very, very fundamental. You will be surprised. A lot of people are in the wrong places in life. Why? They went looking for money instead of fulfilling their purpose in life. So when we talk about knowledge of your destiny, as far as developing yourself is concerned, can you find out from your maker, your heavenly father, God, find out what God has wired you to do. 
if you are able to find out what God has wired you to do, then concentrate your efforts. There is something that uh, John Maxwell is one of the greatest leaders of our time. It's called John C. Maxwell. He says, find out one thing that you are best. Find out one thing that you can do effortlessly and then put all your 100%. He calls it 101% principle. Find one thing you are best. If you are good in hotel industry, like this place, you will always produce the best resort. You will produce the best hotel. And customers want a good place. People want an excellent place. So if you are into hotel industry, if you are into matatu industry, can you make your matatu the best? Can you put proper seats? Can you change every now and then the sitting of your matatu? Don't just stay with the same seat covers for years until even it attracts things like bed bugs because you are not changing, you're even not aware and you will chase people out. So can you make sure you know much concerning your destiny? What has God called you to do? If you know what God has called you to do, you will put all your effort and you will become the best. You will never struggle to be employed if it is employment. You will never struggle with career or even beginning your own company because already you have the idea of where you want to go in God. Very, very crucial. There are three departments of your being that are very important to develop as far as developing yourself is concerned. The first department, I call it your spirit man. Your spirit man. Secondly, is your soul. When I talk about your soul, I'm talking about your mind, I'm talking about your will, the power to make choices, and I'm talking about your emotions. That is the soul. The soul of a human being is combined of the three compartments. It is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And then finally is now your body. Those are the three compartments you must develop. And when we speak about developing to fulfill your destiny, you need what I call a fervent spirit. Your spirit should be excited. We looked at it in our previous episodes, but you must be a man who is always excited. You must be a man who is always joyous, jovial. You don't have to be a man who is always sad. It will crush your spirit. So you must be a man who has a fervent spirit, sound mind, and a healthy body. Those are the three areas you need to develop. Fervent spirit, you must always do whatever you need to do in terms of prayer, study of the word, so that you have a fervent spirit. Sound mind means you have to develop your mind so that it can be sound. A study was done sometimes back in the United States of America, and they found out that there were over 3,000 people who were past the age of 100 years. They were so advanced and they were still very strong, over 3,000 of them. And they asked uh, the secrets of their lives. One thing was very common among the 3,000 of them. All of them in their houses, they had a library. There are people who had all manner of books in terms of development. They even studied in areas of human physiology, human anatomy, and yet they were not doctors. They knew something and they could not be sure change when they went to hospital because they knew something. Others studied even in areas where they had nothing to do, but developed their mind and their mind was not obsolete their mind was not old it was still current even though their years were advanced that is what i call developing your mind a healthy body is a product of good nutrition for your body to be health because many other times you hear people praying for divine healing and yet they are eating bad food we are praying for divine healing we are telling god we believe in the scripture and yet you are neglecting your body. You are not eating a balanced diet. You are maybe into energy giving foods only, or you are into proteins only, or you are into vitamins only. You need to be balanced. In every meal you partake, make sure it is balanced. That is how your body will remain healthy. That is how the devil will not take advantage and bring diseases because of malnutrition, because there are many people who are sick because of lack of proper nutrition, not even because of the devil. It is because of lack of proper nutrition. So for you to have a healthy, sound body where it can cooperate with you as you do things of life, then you have to eat 
a healthy diet, nutrition, good nutrition, and also adequate exercise. If you are blessed to have a car, don't always be in your car 24 seven. There are times you leave your car, walk 500 meters, go and do your things before you come back to the car. Not everywhere you go, you park the car, you enter, you come out, you enter. Just to take your time so that you have good exercise, your body will be healthy. A sound mind is a product of information and wise reasoning. Sound mind is a product of information. If you know much, your mind, your brain will be very active. And then also wise reasoning. And I usually say we looked at one of the times when we studied on wisdom. One of the great things you need to do is to be wise in your reasoning. Take time to think. Take time to process information. Don't just release information that you have not sifted, that you have not looked into. Before you give out information, can you sift the information? That is what I call wise reasoning. And then a sound, a fervent spirit is a product of number one, revelation, number two, intercession, and number three, association with the almighty God. That is what I call fervent spirit. A man who is always joyous, bubbling in the spirit. Because of what? Because of revelation through the word of God. Always starting to know better in God. That is, you have a revelation in a particular area. You are a man of intercession. You are a man who don't only pray for yourself, but you pray for your nation, you pray for others. You are part of God's agenda in your nation, in the ministry. Fervent spirit. And then also association with God. I'm talking about carrying the presence of God in your life. That is associating with God. Always find time to tell God, I just love you. Not only every time you go to prayer, you are asking God for things. Don't be a beggar before the Lord always. Just go before God and tell him today, I have just come to associate with you. I have just come to ask that your presence does not leave me. I remember David in Psalm 51, one of the prayers he said, God, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. He repented, he asked God for repentance after what he had done with the wife of Uriah, giving birth and the child died. And that is where he made the prayer of Psalm 51. He said, God, please don't take away the Holy Spirit from me. That is a man who associated with God and he was very sensitive when he erred out of the ways of the Lord. There are people whose bodies are healthy. Their spirits are far and all right, but their minds are dull. Their minds are dull. I want to read from you in Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 17. The Bible says, everyone is dull hearted without knowledge. Everyone is dull hearted without knowledge. If you have no knowledge, you will be a dull person. Your heart will be dull. In the above scripture that we have just studied, the minds of people are dull because they cannot remember the last time they fed their minds with good food. They don't remember the last time they had a Christian book, a good book if you are in the kingdom. If you are in the business world, they don't remember the time they studied a book on business, a book on food production. If you are into food production industry, the trends of the market, there are many things that keep coming. Are you aware? If you are in the hotel industry like this place, are you aware of the trends in the market? Are you aware of the new food that is international? Are you aware of the cooking skills? Are you aware of the new colleges that are accredited internationally that are able to serve not only your locality, you are able to serve people beyond where you are. Don't just be local. If you have a business, you must reach a point in your life where you are current in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The physical food you eat is for your body. The food for the mind is knowledge. If you want your mind to be always full, feed it with knowledge and food for the spirit is revelation from the word of God. Uh, Matthew chapter four, verse four, the Bible says, but he answered and said, that is when the devil was tempting Jesus. He was a man who was full of scripture, the son of God. Jesus answered and said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word that proceeded from the word of God. By every word that proceeded from the word of God. Very, very crucial. So when you have a balanced diet in your body, when you have a balanced diet in your body, then 
your body will always be sound. You'll be walking like a man who has stamina, who has virility, you are strong. You are not a man who is weak. You walk with stamina. People are able to see this man is alive. But other people, because of lack of stamina in their body system, because of the nutrition and because of exercise that is not available to them, when they are walking, people will think they are sick. So don't be in that category at all. Uh, why would you graduate from a university and the last time you went through uh, the books you studied is two years ago, three years ago, even if you don't have a job? Why don't you show God that you still remember? Why don't you go back to those books? Why don't you open them? And then you will see God blessing your life. I charge you to commit to continuous study. That is what I will charge you. Commit yourself to continuous study. Commit yourself to be a man and a woman who will surely fulfill your destiny on the platform of the things that are able to take you to the next level. It is very, very crucial for you and for me to be able to study. Develop yourself. Run your race in such a way that your generation will bless God that you were alive. Develop yourself to a point where your generation will appreciate God that you are alive. Because you will look beyond anything that you may be getting in terms of pay. You will look beyond that and fulfill your destiny. And this is what I tell people. One of the greatest ways to develop yourself is to find out your area of speciality. Don't just do anything else. I remember when I was first enlisted in the police, my first posting was in a place called Marsabit. And then I was posted to the border we call Moyale. Moyale border is the border between Ethiopia in the eastern side of our nation. And I remember there were people who were tired the first year of their posting very tired and I remember one man who came all the way from Nyaururu. One time he told me very early in the morning, I am tired of this job. This is not the job I wanted. I have no desire. And then I was asking him, why did you have to go through a training of 10 months in the Kenya Police College? Why did you? He said it is because my parents forced me to do that. So I asked him, what is your specialty? He said, I want to study accounts. Then I told him, then you tell your parents, I have done what I, you wanted me to do. Now I want to do what I feel I should do. And that's exactly what he did. He went to the parents. He told the parents, thank you for giving me an opportunity to go to the police. But now I want to study accounting. And the last time I knew him was almost seven years ago. A very successful businessman. Why? He developed himself in the area of accounting. He left alone the police work and for me it was a preparation ground because there are times our destinies are so great that God has to take you through a process of developing you you must accept God to develop you and then you must also accept to go into developing yourself so that in future you are able to do what you are doing effortlessly invest much in the study of your destiny invest much so that Whatever you begin, you begin on an excellent level, on a level of knowledge. Many other times you have seen people going into business world. When you ask them concerning uh, turnover, they can't tell you what is a turnover. And they have borrowed a loan of one million, but they have no idea on the market studies, visibility studies, they have not done. How does this product sell? That is what I call studying in the area of your speciality so that when you go into the market you don't go there and within a year all the loan is wasted you have no capital and you go back to the drone boat they begin to auction some of the things that you have i want to just release a blessing over your life that god will put in you the heart to develop your spirit by revelation to develop your mind by knowledge and to develop your body by good nutrition and good exercise. Those are the three areas you should always aspire to develop yourself. 
and your career will fall into place. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I decree that every Oracle television viewer, wherever they are watching, may they develop their mind, that is their emotions, their will. May they develop their bodies by good nutrition and exercise. May they develop their spirit by revelation of the word. And as they do that, my Father, shift them to where they need to be in destiny and in future. In Jesus' mighty name. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name.